Welcome geniuses, I'm Genie, your best buddy for A-Levels. In this channel, we'll bring you to explore the secret formula behind success. For this video, I'm going to cover topic 2 for AS, which is on biological molecule. So this topic is all about um, organic compound and water molecules that we're going to learn. So I'm going to focus on protein, especially the structure of hemoglobin, which is one of the popular questions, which is also one of the examples of globular protein. And we will need to relate how to describe the structure of the hemoglobin with relevance to the importance of the iron. And I will relate to the structure of the hemoglobin, which emphasize on its quaternary structure made of the alpha chain and beta chain, where we need to identify from the diagram itself. So now let's look at the structure of a hemoglobin. Okay, just a recap. Let's revise on the structure of a protein. So proteins are generally made of primary, secondary, or tertiary structure. And sometimes some molecule can go into quaternary structure. So how do you define primary structure? A chain of amino acid. So if your amino acid, which you have 20 types of them, are joined together by peptide bond, this is known as primary structure of protein. Secondary structure will be still made out of single chain of protein, but the protein will coil into alpha helix or beta pleated sheet. And how is the shape being maintained? It is actually maintained by hydrogen bonds. So don't forget, the peptide bond is still there, but it's the hydrogen bond that actually maintains the shape. As for tertiary structure, the same polypeptide chain will continue to fold onto itself to form a spherical shape. And the shape is maintained by four types of bonds, which includes hydrogen bonds, hydrophobic interaction, which is facing inwards. Disulfide bridge that is formed between amino acid cysteine. And lastly, ionic bond that is formed between positive and negatively charged R group. How do you differentiate between the tertiary and quaternary structure? For quaternary structure, you will see that they are made of many globular shaped protein. So it's defined as a protein that is made up of two or more polypeptide chains. And all of them are usually in globular shape. So now, looking at this diagram, which level of protein structure do you think hemoglobin belongs to? So number one, you see that there are four different types of color. So it shows that it has made up of more than two chains. So number one, hemoglobin is a quaternary structure protein as it's made out of for polypeptide chain. Second thing, we have to identify the types of chain that is present. So if you observe carefully, this might they show a different color, but there's actually two alpha chain and two beta chain. So you actually need only two types of gene to code for this globin. So number two, we see that they're made out of Two alpha 
and two beta chains. Point number three, since we know that the whole hemoglobin is actually a globular protein with spherical shape, so in order to form the spherical shape, they definitely have hydrophilic R group that are pointing outwards. Therefore, they are soluble in water as they can form hydrogen bonds with water. So they have hydrophilic R groups of amino acid pointing outwards. Therefore, they are soluble in water as they can form hydrogen bonds with water. Point number four, let's relate the structure to its function. We know that hemoglobin can actually bind to oxygen. So which part of the hemoglobin allows it to bind to oxygen? So sometimes you will see that there's actually something hidden within the polypeptide chain. And you will realize that each polypeptide chain actually has one of this structure. This is actually the heme group, which is known as a prostatic group. as it is not made up of amino acid. So it's a part of a protein, but it's not made up of amino acid. Take note of this. So how does the heme group carries oxygen? The hemoglobin actually has iron, which is Fe2+, that is capable of binding to oxygen reversibly forming oxyhemoglobin. So, how many oxygen molecules that each hemoglobin can bind to? So now, looking at the diagram, how many heme groups can you identify? So in total, we can see that each chain has a heme group And each group capable of binding to one oxygen molecule, or we call it as two oxygen atom. So in total, each hemoglobin can bind to a total of four oxygen molecule or eight oxygen atom. So think of it. This is for one hemoglobin molecule. For each red blood cell, there are a total of 270 millions of hemoglobin. So imagine each hemoglobin can bind to four oxygen molecule. So it'll be 270 million times four. This is how much a hemoglobin can carry oxygen. So how many marking points can you see from describing a hemoglobin? related to its function, we have one, two, three, we have number four, the heme group. Here they stated it's H-E-M-E, -E, but actually uh, according to our CIE syllabus, it's H-A-E-M. Point number four, and the role of the iron, number five, and total number of oxygen molecule they can bind to, point number six. So you have this six point to score for usually four to five marks question, or it's very useful for your understanding for MCQ. Hope this video helped you to understand in detail the structure of hemoglobin, to answer structure question, and for multiple choice. Thank you. That's all for today's video. If you are interested in more genuine sharing by other geniuses, please subscribe to our channel and don't forget to turn on the notification bell, ding dong. Also, if you're struggling with one or two past your questions and the March scheme just doesn't seem to help, Genius got you covered. Feel free to let us know what question it is by filling in the Google form linked in the description below. Genius Hub 
will get genius teachers to fulfill your request for the solution. Genie, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.